alive for children on Halloween, but all the year around, superstitious fears play a large part in the imagination of the young. Any deserted house becomes an object of dread. If it has a history of disaster or sudden death, it automatically becomes a haunted house and a challenge to juvenile courage. <laughs> Next to fear, superstition breeds best on curiosity. The little girl who asks, love me, love me not, of a daisy, will often grow up to ask the same questions of a Ouija board. We all want, at times, to take an unauthorized peek into the future, and so the black art still flirts. Your destiny can be read in the shadows that cloud a crystal ball. In the mystic combination of a spread of cards, in the lines and creases on the palm of your hand, in the bumps and knobs on your head, and in the soggy sediment in your teacup. Much more ominous is the belief in cures by dark sorcery. Each year, hundreds of Americans die because they go to a wizard instead of a doctor. This man's sudden lameness is diagnosed as a hex put on by an enemy. Prescription, burn the candle with your enemy's name on it and stick a pin into the conjure doll. Strange medicine in this atomic age, but it pays well. Five dollars, please. But to the average American, the harmless superstition such as spilled salt tossed over the left shoulder, oh, that's just an old custom. Nor is there any extra luck in finding a pin. It's only housewifely thriftiness to pick it up. And if you walk under a ladder, something might fall on you. As for meeting up with a black cat, well, we're not really superstitious, just cautious. Many hotel guests would sooner sleep in the lobby than spend a night in a room numbered 13. And yet, on the medieval assumption that when you change the name, you change the magic, the same room labeled 12A is okay. Hotel rooms are often designed so it's impossible to get out on the left or unlucky side of the bed. Despite our modern sophistication, many Americans still dress in the morning according to an eccentric and superstitious ritual, like saving the shoes and socks for last. Most American superstitions are observed in secret by otherwise sensible people. But even superior intellect is not necessarily proof against hoodoo. Even a Phi Beta Kappa key may degenerate into a good luck charm. But no good luck charm can prevent the misfortunes that would be certain to overtake anyone who ventures out on a day bearing this unlucky date. That's right, brother. Let her play it safe. The most widespread luck charm is the rabbit's foot, and many a flourishing business has sprung up to supply these in the form of keychains, bracelet charms, and other novelties that ward off evil for thousands of wearers. Of course, no one really believes in these magic doodads, yet this manufacturer alone sells a million rabbit's feet a year. Of bunnies being the way they are, there is no danger of a shortage of feet. Good luck, Sonny. Even the down-to-earth truck driver has his talisman. And the realistic cab driver, his. For centuries, horseshoes have been decorating and, of course, protecting American homes. It takes only one to bring luck to a whole family. An added measure of insurance is the roof tree, nailed to the home when it is built. 
In rural sections of America, there is a firm belief in the magic wand used by the dowser. This divining rod, a sort of homespun forerunner of the Geiger counter, tells the dowser of subterranean water by dipping psychically over the best well site. Of course, you can find water in the Sahara if you dig deep enough. Black magic in modern America. Here is a spell being cast on a farmer's livestock. Any cattle that step on this witch mark will sicken and die. If by chance a cow does die, the hex doctor will claim the credit. And if it doesn't, he'll blame the foresight of the farmer who hangs a protective counter charm over his barn door. These taboos and fetishes crop up in the very young. Jenny here dares not step on a crack lest she break her mother's back. Childish superstition, but small wonder. Here is Jenny's mother. She's about to plague her friends and the post office department by relaying copies of an extra potent chain letter. And here's Jenny's father. No, the police aren't after him. He's merely forgotten his briefcase and rather than retrace his steps, must retrieve it by a different route. Superstitious? Don't be silly. He calls it taking no chances. What about his neighbors? Do they in this 20th century also practice wizardry? Well, John's luck has been bad, so he blows on his cards after he takes the reasonable precaution of reversing his chair. Jim's been winning, so he sensibly knocks wood with each card he's dealt. Eddie here isn't superstitious. He just believes that his card should be rubbed with a horse chestnut to increase their power. But who wins the pot with two pair, aces and eights, and no mumbo-jumbo? Why, Homer. He also wins bad news, for his winning pair is the same that Wild Bill Hickok drew the night he was killed. The aces and eights, dead man's hand. Is Homer going to let this bother him? Certainly not. He is a rational, civilized American like all of us. Fearing neither hex nor jinx, hoodoo nor voodoo. We've come a long way since the Dark Ages, haven't we?